shit, this guy's blocking me all the way. Oh, sorry about that. Oh no. Yes, it's empty. In my truck. Yeah, I knocked one over. Oh my god, it's heavy. And this water is not even hot, man. It's like warm. Very hard. Uh, so, uh, nothing yet, eh? I'll try and get the hot, hot water. Yeah. That way you guys will be able to cut through whatever we... Like 90%. What we're trying to do right now is trying to thaw the line because it it's iced up all the way down towards the lake. It runs out this way and then we're pumping the lake. So hopefully it's not frozen all the way to the lake because then because then that's another whole problem in itself, which is an emergency because it takes care of probably seven eight buildings this this pump house, including the school. You can't use the washrooms, you can't wash up, you know? So that's part of the struggle of being here on the island. It's hard to come to work to, to a place in this condition with the equipment as old as it is and as wore out as it is. I just don't have the funds in my program to be able to fix the stuff that I need to fix. These guys are gonna be out of water right away. Uh, it's such a battle, like everything. It's kind of loud in here, so. So we're in the arena right now, and this, this has very hot water. So last night I must have came here at least uh, 12, 14 times. Filling up five bottles at a time. It's a real, uh, Hard job. My family questions me when I'm when I'm gonna be home. And this weekend is the powwow. So if we don't get the water going tonight or this afternoon, I'm gonna have to run hoses from the arena here over to the pump house. It's a pain in the ass. <sighs> I'm the only operator. I run 10 pump houses. Connect these ones there. When something breaks, I have to fix it. We're gonna run a hose from the arena and we're gonna fill them up and they usually last about two or three hours. Those tanks when they're all filled. Everything's frozen. You have to empty the lines each time you use them, otherwise they freeze right away. And all they are is fire hoses. Go we'll tie that to that other one. And there's last time we used like 10 or 10 or 12. That's fixed. Yeah. We good? Turn it on, yeah. The last time this happened, we were out for a week. It's very challenging. Since we're having the pause, so the whole water problem is is part of what's happening here, so. I'm uh, the arena director, so now I gotta worry about getting the cedar trees for the pile inside. But I'm off. There's some, some small trees here. We're looking for tinier trees, the, the smaller trees like. So those trees, we used, we used them because they because that's one of our sacred medicines. And I talked to in each individual tree, I asked it to come, if he could come and help us for the weekend, like to come and to come be with us. When I, when I speak to those trees, I ask them to bring your good life, their Minu Bamat and We ask for that because the people come to Paos for healing. I'm an intergenerational survivor. I survived the trauma, I survived the abuse. I, I'm still here, I'm, 
I'm not carrying that cycle that that was brought on to us. I'm trying to stop it, and I'll use it by using my pipe and my my bundles to my bundle to to work with my wife and other people to try help. You don't have to be a chief. You don't have to be a counselor. You don't have to be a judge, a lawyer, a cop to want to lead your people. So much pain and so much hurt. I'm going to grab this one, just, just going to let him stand there for a second. So I offered the tobacco for the tree and asked them to, to come with me to come help the people because that's what he's going to do. Oh, I got to... Oh. I'll grab the other tree and I'll be right back. Oh, looks good, bro. That's like my vision last night. The sky was just real orange like that. Hey! I haven't seen you for a long time. Oh. I seen you. I seen your head sticking out there at the. <laughs> one of my relatives there, they come to share their drum. So each one of those things has a direction, right? Those represent the grandmothers. That could be a man, a man drum or a woman drum. Sometimes it's a thunderbird drum. Sometimes it's a a salve drum, or you know. And this is one of the drums that I first started learning how to sing on. Like we have our pipe songs, we have our, you know, like our healing songs and their songs are all healing songs. So it's very, I'm very, uh, very honored to have them here with me this weekend and I'm gonna give them this tobacco because I gave them tobacco before to ask them to come. But now I'm gonna give them tobacco because they came and honor the grandfather that came and the grandmothers and the pipe and the other stuff. Yeah, I remember you guys coming when I was a kid, coming here to the powwow. <laughs> yeah, I grew up here with the red guy's daughter. Yeah. I was kind of hoping to get as much of this done as I can. But I'm, I'm tired. So what are you, what are you uh, drawing here? So I'm trying to do um, an elder talk, teaching the kids. See, when I quit drinking, one of the things I realized was I, uh, I never contributed anything to our community. And uh, in my artwork, I'm contributing. Building the road, that's uh, something I'm also contributing to. And that's a great honor, I believe. And with my residential, um, Compensation. I, uh, I I bought a, a dozer with that, so uh, in hope, in hopes that I would be able to work on the road and uh, boom, it's here. So it was our elders, or like my my dad, your dad, that uh, set everything in motion. Like they, we wanted a road and. I'm sure my, uh, my dad, your dad, is, they're all dancing and celebrating right now. Because that's something we've been struggling with for, uh, since we've been put on the island. I think it will uh, benefit our community uh, greatly. So this used to be your dad's house? Yeah, this was my uh, my dad's house. There's so much uh, my dad left me, left me with that. I also got his sacred bundle, and that was uh, given to me by him before he passed on. That was so he, he knew I had something in me. So that's something I didn't even know I had in me. And, it's there. I'm still learning all that. I was uh, going through a rough time at that time. Uh, 
passing of my dad, you know, like, like so that that was very hard on me. Um, dealing with my residential school was uh, another issue that I had. And I, I kept all that stuff inside me, like I said, you know, blocked it out. So when I was, uh, when I went for my hearing, I, all that came out and uh, so that, that really messed up my, my thinking and my emotions and everything. It's just what happened to me when I was a kid, all came out and I had to deal with it again. And uh, thank, thanks to my culture, I was able to, uh, I guess, overcome, you know, like, uh, or to deal with it properly. It gave me strength. Yeah, there's no way. I'm gonna have to find a spot somewhere here. Well, thank you, buddy. You wanna get that door for me, please? <laughs> Yeah, made it. I just learned that uh, all the feathers that I wear are for healing. The eagle gave that to us so we could spread the healing with that. And uh, that includes the fan, uh, my, my muscle. I'm still learning all that. And uh, for me, it's healing for me also, but uh, when I dance, I, uh, I dance for others that can't dance. And, uh, or for those that are sick, my dancing, it's, it's healing for me. I, I love it. It's just, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't give it up for anything. You know, there's just no going back for me. It's uh, learning, learning, learning from here on in. Good to go. Get that microphone over there, fellas. Help us out there, young guys. Help us out.